those of you that don't know what the Honest Opinion series is, it's basically me playing alphas or betas and telling you what I thought. Bear in mind that these games aren't finished yet, so don't take this as the final product. So like I said in the previous video, I'm not someone who is a big fan of like Left 4 Dead sort of games, or Left 4 Dead in general. I mean, I don't hate it. I think that it's definitely a fun game when I actually play it with friends, and I definitely have a good time. It's just that it wasn't my type of game that I normally play. So when a subscriber actually told me about this game, I didn't actually think too much about it. And it was also reinforced when people told me that Back 4 Blood was made by the same developers that created Evolve, and that kind of had me put off. From what they said, Evolve was a good game, but the monetization was really bad. Well, I'm happy to say that Back 4 Blood is actually a pretty good game, but I'm hoping that the monetization won't be as bad as Evolve was. But I just want to be clear, I have no idea if this game is going to have monetization. Evolve had monetization when they were under the 2K umbrella, but Back 4 Blood actually has Warner Brothers as the publisher this time around. So hopefully, if they do decide to add monetization, it's not as egregious. I'm hoping that they don't add monetization at all, because the game itself is actually already as pricey at 60 bucks. And for that 60 bucks price tag, I really hope that they have more content that was featured here. I'm sure they will, because I heard that they had, like, four more characters to add, but I really hope it's just way more than this. But I'm going a little off topic here. Let's talk about the demo itself. So the demo is straight up a full campaign with multiple missions in between. Much like a Left 4 Dead game, you got your missions that are in between, and then the mission at the very end where you have to escape. Overall, I would say that if you're just playing on classic, it'll probably take you around 30 to 40 minutes to beat. That's just like if you want to have fun, play the classic mode, which is basically the casual mode, where you could have a good time, but also beat the missions, you know what I'm saying? Things don't start to get tough unless you actually start going into the survivor or nightmare mode, where the game just comes ridiculously unbalanced, and enemies are a hell of a lot tougher than they were before, and you don't have a whole lot of ammo. The game will encourage you to actually look throughout the whole map to try to see if you can find supplies so you'll be out here busting down doors or looking in all the nooks and crannies to find the extra copper or guns to help you out along the way the reason you're looking for copper is because it's like a new currency that's been added to the game when you're in a safe room you use that currency to basically buy things like attachments for your weapon medical supplies ammo explosives or upgrades but notice how i don't say weapons yes that's the one thing that i noticed is like a big difference from this game and the previous left for dead games is that now there are no weapons inside of the safe rooms we'll talk about the weapons in just a second but i want to talk quickly about the store here i think my biggest issue with this is that all the stuff in here is kind of expensive like i honestly don't think that you kill enough or find enough of that copper to actually buy anything that's really good in here like i wanted to like fully deck out my weapon with all the attachments that are featured in here but it just honestly doesn't feel like it's possible i maybe got like one attachment and restocked on my ammo and that was about it i didn't even have a chance to really try out the upgrades because the shit was just so goddamn expensive like they need to either decrease the cost or increase the amount of copper that we can find because it just ain't enough jack but aside from that i actually don't mind the store i actually quite like it and i think the cool thing about it is that if you open up the safe house you can still come back and buy more stuff if you actually do get enough money that is like the most i ever got was like just a little over like 1k every time that i got to a safe room i don't think i ever really got more than that but uh yeah getting back to the weapons there's a pretty good variety i would say i remember remember seeing an M4, two different variants of the AK, an M14, two different shotguns. I saw a Tech 9, a Glock, and a 1911. And I believe that was all the ones that I saw, but I'm pretty sure there's more weapons that you can find. Probably some more that hasn't even been added to the game just yet. But pretty much, it's one of those things where it's like, you have to find a weapon, and you want to make sure that it's a weapon that will actually help you throughout the entire time. I tried to see if I could try out every weapon, and I would say that the ones that were really useful were probably the M4 and the AK. The M14 had a lot of damage against the big guys if you hit them just right, but obviously it didn't have a whole lot of ammo. It's really not that great in close quarters combat, so I try not to use it that often. The bigger variant of the AK shot a little too slow and was a little too inaccurate in my opinion. The pistols were good, but you know, pistols don't work well against the bigger boys. So really the weapons that you want are probably the AK and the M4 with an upgraded extended mag. The Tech 9 was there, but I never really got to use it. And the other shotguns, I was not able to use them either. Like anytime that I went towards one to try and pick it up, the other 
other teammate would pick it up and i'm just like damn it let me use it so i never really got a chance to actually use the shotguns but from what i've seen it looks like they're actually pretty devastating especially in like a little horde the gunplay itself was actually not that bad it was pretty good for the most part if you're someone that's really lazy when it comes to aiming in games and this is probably the game for you because you could just literally shoulder the weapon and just keep popping fools left and right and one thing that i hated about the aiming is that it felt like it was a little too slow to like get to your face to try to aim so i just stuck with no aiming you know unless it was like really far away if anything i was like really inaccurate when i was actually aiming in but for the most part i was pretty much hitting my targets every time but uh yeah you basically find weapons in crates that you can look around in the map to find they are randomly generated so they're not going to be in the same spot every time some weapons have like a set place and you almost find that weapon there almost every time but for the most part there's a bunch of weapons and coins that are hiding in the level you just have to like find them you can also find defibrillators medic packs grenades scattered throughout the map every now and then it's all randomly generated it's definitely not guaranteed that you'll find it all but you'll find a bunch of stuff out there if you look so that's all i really got to say about the guns they all work pretty well in my opinion it's just uh they're only good in certain situations like i prefer the ak and the m4 for the most part of the gameplay and uh yeah there's also melee in the game uh it's pretty useful against like the regular zombies not too useful against the bigger zombies honestly i would just stick with the gun but it would save on ammo if you did go melee so it's whatever there are these new things called the cards i think they were they're basically like perks you get a bunch of cards you could either have the default set or make your own set that you can use throughout the gameplay i'm not entirely sure how they work because i didn't use them that often but from what i understand they can actually be pretty op if you're playing in the classic but if you're playing in the survivor or nightmare mode it could actually be pretty helpful because those modes are ridiculously unbalanced i can't really say for sure if these were all that used for at all but it seemed like they helped but i wasn't too familiar with how to actually use them per se so i thought i'd just mention them that they do exist and i heard that they actually are op but i wasn't sure how to use them but anyways the characters themselves i could honestly care less about them like when i was streaming the game people were complaining about how talkative they were but as someone who's playing the game it's like i'm not really hearing what they're saying like i'm trying to focus on all the freaking zombies so as a viewer you're gonna see it differently from the player's perspective like i didn't even notice that they were talking most of the time the only time i ever really heard them talking was when they're calling out like a specific type of zombie to be aware of so i honestly didn't find them that annoying maybe if i was just watching the stream maybe i would but i don't know so you got the regular zombies and then you got like four unique ones five if you want to count the zombie with riot armor on you have to shoot his helmet off before you can actually kill him or just melee him to death you've got like a big zombie that freaking explodes if you shoot it enough but it also vomits at you and clutters up your screen when it hits you with the freaking vomit i think when it explodes it also kills zombies i haven't really tested that but i believe it does but anyways there's also another zombie that has like a gigantic arm that basically just slams the floor wherever you're at and it can actually throw you if you're close enough it can also be an insta kill if you're not careful that dude's more of a bullet sponge if you're not careful it has like a little orange thing at the top of its arm right there and i wonder if that's like the sweet spot where you have to hit i think i've hit it like multiple times though so i'm not entirely sure if that's just a glitch or if that's not where you're supposed to hit it like i don't know i just kept hitting it wherever and then there's also like a spider like zombie that likes to like hop on walls and shoot you with like its web if it actually hits you you're stuck you're frozen in place and you can't actually get yourself out which is kind of lame it's like your legs are tied down but your arms aren't like how come you can't just like force your way out right so you have to have a buddy come up and knife you to get out and if you don't get out then zombies will come and swarm you and take you down because you can't actually defend yourself until you're actually down then you start shooting at them or hitting them with a melee weapon until a player comes and picks you up uh if you die you can use a defibrillator to revive your teammate but if you don't have a defibrillator then you can actually get revived later on in the level like players can actually find you inside of like a little carcass looking thing that's attached to the wall so basically like left for dead pretty much the spider things are like relatively easy to kill though if you just shoot them in the chest so those are pretty much like all the common enemies uh the one that's not so common is the ogre which is just like a behemoth of a freaking monster that pops up out of the ground and attacks you on on certain parts of the mission i have yet to actually kill this thing i've gotten close but anytime that i try to we end up getting wrecked whether this be on classic or nightmare it just feels almost impossible to try and kill him but i'm sure i can do it if i had a team maybe but yeah uh the maps themselves were actually pretty well made there was hardly any times when i got lost uh, i pretty much knew what to do almost every time and there's a bunch of like nooks and crannies for you to actually go and find stuff you could like break down certain doors go into certain areas where you wouldn't think to look but sometimes there's stuff that's there 
But uh, the only time where I felt like the map was a little bit off was probably towards the end. When you're going on the boat, the cruiser, or whatever it's called, like you're supposed to get up, go up top, and then get out and go towards the military guy, but they're like, oh, well, we need you to place a bomb on the bridge or inside the boat, I forget where they said. And it's like, you have to go back onto the boat to blow it up. That part was like the most annoying part because I just, like, I never actually passed a level with the team that I had. Like, if I actually had a team that was coordinating, then maybe I could have won. But unfortunately, I was by myself. And every time that I got to that part of the level with the random team, we just never freaking beat it. But I was watching other people on their streams and I did see what it looks like when you actually beat it. It's like, I was right there, but freaking, but we weren't coordinated enough, which is like, God damn it. So overall, this game is pretty good. The release date for the game, I believe, is in June of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. June 22nd, 2021. I mean, I hardly ran into any bugs. There's maybe like one or two zombies that were like T-posing after I killed them. But aside from that, I didn't run into anything too crazy. The game could use a little more optimization. With all the zombies that were on screen, my frames went down to like 30, a little lower than that. But aside from that, not bad. I just hope that when release does come, that they actually have enough content to make it worth that $60 price. So yeah, I think that's where I'm going to end it. What are your guys' thoughts? Were you able to play in this closed alpha? They said closed, but uh, apparently there was no NDA, so I guess I could just stream it. Which if you want to watch the stream, then I'll just have it in the eye icon at the top right. And uh, yeah, with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.